Hey guys, welcome to another episode of EU4, Basilius here, and today we're going to be playing Denmark in EU4. Yep, the Denmark. Denmark. Denmark in 1444 is the leader of the Kalmar Union, a historical union between Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Uh, you also an overlord of Holstein, which is Schleswig Holstein. And you have a core in Gotland. Gotland, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. If any of you watching is Danish, or Swedish, or Scandinavian in general, uh, please tell me. So you want to give religious state, clerical advisory council to the clergy. You also want to give religious diplomats. You want to give primacy of the nobility, aristocratic counselors to the nobility, land of commerce, patronage of the arts, Commercial Advisory Board indebted to the burgers. Select a diet, whichever one's the best for you, probably is. And bada bing bada boom. It's very important that you don't spend any of your mana points immediately, because you will need them for something. Uh, rival England, Lithuania, and whoever else rivaled you. Next, you want to uh, call? issue an embargo on the English. I'm going to take this mission. And for this, you want a career hire advisor. See if you have a dip um, diplomatic reputation advisor. If you don't, it's okay. It's not necessary. All right, get those four ships. Start improving relations with Poland and Sweden. Build the free company. And try to get another alliance if you can. Alliance. Oh, nobody good wants to alliance, so that's okay. Cool. Now we can unpause. Alright. A new leader arises. The Crown Councils of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, but then who cares? Uh, basically, all you need to know is they get a cool general and 25% liberty desire which will make them disloyal you must not let the month chick pass otherwise they will be disloyal like their attitude will change to disloyal once their attitude changes to disloyal people can actually support their independence so uh oh spaghettio you got a dev up stocko Boom, now they're not disloyal. Congratulations, you fixed a problem. But you also have you have to keep an eye on the Swedish liberty desire. So you don't like So you don't like get killed, you know. Next you wait until the eleventh of December to declare war on the Gotland. Tekor Gotland. Alright, I'm gonna assign a general to the first army here, Christopher von Mittelsbach. And select, um, and go over to Gotland with our navy. See, something I need to tell you here is Gotland usually allies Lithuania or someone big like Poland. Uh, if that happens, you're kinda screwed, not gonna lie. If they ally Poland, restart. If they ally Lithuania, it's okay, because Poland will PU them. If Poland does not PU them and goes for the local noble, then you have to restart. Alright, so in my case, Gotland did not get any allies, so that's cool. Now that we've won the battle, that's cool. I'm gonna just keep rerolling for a trade efficiency. For a, for a diplomatic reputation guy, you don't have to, but I'd prefer to. Now, while we're sieging Gotland here, I'm going to. Uh, Let's 
just gonna build two galleys here. It's fine. And now that we've won the Siege of Gotland. Yay. I'm gonna improve relations with Denmark for a little bit and just. Uh, for mission, you see. You see. We will get call for peace, but that's okay. All right, cool. Now that we have over 150 relations with Denmark and they are less than 20% um, liberty desire, we get this event. I'm gonna take, obviously, the middle one because the bottom one will make them pretty hard to keep in check. Now we can actually peace out of this war. Take Gotland. GG well played, you lose. And now we get this mission. Now. This is actually. A pretty good thing. Okay. If you're a newer player and you don't and you're not good at keeping your subjects in check, you're gonna take the second option and take the strong duchy's privilege. As you can see here. Where is it? Strong duchy's privilege. I'm gonna take the stability, but, you know. Yeah. Alright, I'm pulling the monster allies. Cool, cool. So I'm just gonna go and transport ships back to land. So I'm gonna state in Gotland, but I'm not gonna decrease autonomy you are yet. Denmark is a really powerful nation in that it has so many expansion opportunities. You can expand into Northern Europe, you can expand into Russia, you can expand into uh, Eastern Europe over here, and you can colonize it in a new world. It's very versatile. And it's versatility and flavor makes it one of the coolest nations to play in the game. You can see, look how massive this mission tree is, and it gets even more massive once you um, play as some other nations. Make sure not to accidentally accept a royal marriage from random miners in Europe. Alright, now that you've built 12 galleys, you can take this mission, expand the military. You get a cool admiral, nice. And that's pretty much it. You also get claims on all of Livonia, but we don't talk about that one. I'm gonna select these and protect in Lubeck. Actually, I'm gonna park these over here, and I'm gonna declare war. I shall take all of Livonia. You wanna set your subjects to siege here, because that's the most efficient thing to do. Oh, good job, Teutons. Oh, good job, Sweden, sorry. Yes, I'm going to ask for the war reparations. The money. Should I just ask for money? I feel like war ups are going to be better. Alright, now that the Teutons are out, this should be a really easy war. Alright, when this event happens, um, it means that Sweden will have extended liberty desires, so your liber their liberty desire will slowly tick, tick up. You just have to be a little careful, but you should be able to manage it. Hmm. 
Do you have home procedure ready? Alright, when you're piecing everyone out, I'm gonna piece Riga out for money. And I'm also gonna add all treaties with the Poland. When you're piecing the Livonian order out, I'm gonna take every single province they have. It's not much of AE, and nobody will join a coalition. And good game. GG well played, you suck. I'm gonna delete um, the fort here in. I'm actually not gonna delete a fort. I'm gonna concentrate here in Estonia. And core everything up, or should I? Nope. And then I'm gonna core everything up. After this, actually, hold on. Let me cancel the cores. It's probably gonna be cheaper if it's an accepted culture, I think. Pretty sure it's cheaper if it's an accepted culture, but don't at me about that. And then boom. Now we got claims and a lot of Muscovite stuff. Mainly you're gonna declare war on Novgorod. After I gotta cast this spell eye on them. The war with Novgorod should be a cakewalk, um, because they're usually destroyed by Muscovy. And getting destroyed by Muscovy. You can't really recover from that. I've never seen a Novgorod actually, like, beat Muscovy before and in my hundreds of hours playing, thousands of hours playing it before. You always want to set your barks or light ships to protect trade in Lubeck because that's just how it's that's just the most optimal thing. I'm gonna so send my main fleet home. All right, now let me teach you this trick, okay? So I have enough money to repay all my loans. So you, if you have enough money to repay your burger loans and your loan size has increased, take more burger loans. It's free money. Everyone loves free money, and free money is very good. Burger loans probably one of the most powerful estate privileges in the game. I'm just gonna be checking here if I can take enough Grodian. And as you're as you're taking technology, just be sure to build a marketplace in Shayland. It will boost your trade power in Lubeck a lot. And that's all the buildings I have for you. Your quest and stuff. I'm gonna go and um, fully annex uh, me.
while we're in this war, I'm just gonna go through the Denmark mission tree. Real quick. So, integrate Holstein is obviously this. Just integrate them. And the Nobles of Sweden is a very important mission. There's gonna be an event chain in a few years after Sweden gets the Dreams of Freedom event. That will eventually make Sweden have a ton of rebels. There's an option to not get the rebels. But you have to take the option with the rebels. Otherwise, it will be almost impossible to keep the Union with Sweden. That is my advice for you. Anyways, I'm vastly Novgorod here. Um, I'm gonna immediately give out strong duchies and look, we became a great power. Great. Strong duchies will make all our stuff look super loyal. Except Novgorod. But that's okay. And I'm gonna core everything up as well. I'm gonna core all that up too. Improve relations and boom. And in this event. Uh, you, if you have the money, you can take the second one, but it doesn't really matter because, yeah. All right, now for the war with Muscovy. If Poland will join, then this will be an easy one. I'm gonna go here for reconquest because Novgorod has a ton of cores and a butt. So I'm gonna go recon to us. Gonna ask Poland to join the war. Maybe you're going to converge here onto uh, Novgorod. Muscovite forces here in Novgorod. At least that much should be good. Alright, we've won the siege of Moscow. You'll get that much money. Alright, so I'm gonna peace out with Moscovy here. And now we're rich. Alright, for your tier 2 to government form, you can take any of these. I'm gonna take strength and noble privileges for the extra manpower here. Alright. I'm gonna pay all my 1% rolls, and I'm gonna refinance my debt again, and take more free money. This free money is very powerful, said me. In later wars with Muscovy, you should take Rizov, Piskov, and more of the Muscovy proper area. And now I'm heading for my next conquest, which will be the Teutonic Order. I'm gonna take all of this area because it's a very valuable trade, trading thing, very valuable for trade. This should be a really, really easy war because the Teutonic Order has been thoroughly beat by Poland. I just hope Poland doesn't hate us after taking this. It would be a shame. Poland is a good ally. At this point, you should also start improving relations with Schleswig Holstein. And yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I've built every building that's actually good for now, which is just in two provinces. Economy. Not that is Denmark. Uh, you don't have the greatest economy. Start of the game, but you should be deleting some of your forts. I'm actually going to delete the fort in Latgali here. I'm also going to state all of my newly conquered provinces. Make sure to decrease autonomy whenever you're not at war. Anyways, now that I've won the war, I'm just gonna peace out. Peace out. And wow, great. Here, I'm actually gonna. Can I not release the Teutons? Interesting. Why can't I release the Teutons? <sighs> Alright, after this, you just I'm just gonna set my country on to press rebels. And chill out. Worry a bit. Something I did notice is that Norway tends to get a ton of like small rebels, probably because they're seizing a ton of land. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, Poland is kinda of pissed at us. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna actually focus on admin power here and get an advisor so I can just core everything that much faster. I'm actually gonna delete the fort in Rival useless. I'm gonna also decrease autonomy everywhere. We'll probably get me some rebels, but that's okay. Rebels are fine. They give army tradition. So... Uh, so we're the number seven great power here just because we haven't embraced the renaissance because nobody has just slowly start coring konosberg <laughs> 